Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning, and today my guest is Nancy Romita, who is an Alexander Technique teacher of over 30 years experience teaching in the Baltimore in Baltimore, Maryland. And she among among many things that she's done over her teaching career for the past 15 years, she's been teaching a year-long course in experiential anatomy and kinesiology called um, Scientific Basis of Analytic An- Analysis of Movement, and that's at Towson University in Baltimore. And I think my understanding is that out of that or connected with that has come a somatic model that she's created called Functional Awareness anatomy in action. And we're going to be talking about that today. Nancy, a welcome to the show. Hello, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. And how are you doing tonight? Great. Um, so I wonder if you could begin by just giving our listeners a super short description or definition of the Alexander Technique. Sure. Since I've been an Alexander Technique teacher, as you said, for 30 years, um, my current definition today is the Alexander Technique is a movement re-education method in which one's thinking can facilitate ease in the body structure to allow for the least amount of tension in any given action. Right. And I would, I would, I think you would probably agree that that word thinking is very key there. That it is. The yes. way one thinks about oneself or how one moves has a huge impact on the actual phys- physicality of it, right? And I think that's quite unique to that somatic model of the Alexander Technique. Absolutely. I think it is very, very unique to the Alexander uh, Technique. Now, your uh, this specialty that you have carved out, a course in experiential anatomy and kinesiology and, uh, and functional awareness, anatomy in action. Could you say a bit about that in general terms first before we go into some specific examples perhaps? I can. Um, the functional awareness, anatomy in action is a series of explorations in experiential anatomy that heighten our sensory appreciation in order for us to understand movement function and facilitate um, ease in dynamic alignment and effectiveness in body action. So I've uh, found over the 15 years of working with students that there are a wonderful set of um, experiential movements and awareness that we can go through that um, then heightens our cognitive structure for how we move and then either the Alexander technique fits in well with that or dance or yoga or um, any kind of physical activity tennis it's helped with so um, it's an exploration that really helps uh, serve us to enhance any function. And and what does it um what does it have, if I can put it this way, that um just plain old Alexander technique doesn't? What does it add to to uh, Alexander yeah. teaching? Yeah, I would say the Alexander technique is um infused in principles through this work, yet what makes it quite different is um a strong focus on actually understanding your muscle and skeletal structure and that understanding and using that information about understanding say the core muscles of support of the spinal column and how Visualizing them, know where they are, how they do function, really can help us either facilitate our use in Alexander, but facilitate my tennis serve. Mm-hmm. So it's re- it, would you say it's really finding out on yourself a bit about your structure, but not not sort of anatomy at a distance, but your own anatomy? Yeah, there's no PowerPoints. <laughs> no PowerPoints, right. <laughs> it's, it's really, um, I mean, there may be some visual images for folks to work with when we're um, in workshops mm-hmm. or in class. 
it's a series of activity really and in the activity you're experimenting or exploring a better knowledge of your your particular structure because i see um i see one's physical structure and one's function the and one's use as a triangle of information that really help us have more ease in action, less tension. Mm -hmm. And would you agree that most most people out there in the world d don't have very much actual understanding of their structure, of their physical structure? Yes, I teach this course in which students come from all majors. So um, they could be um, criminology majors or they could be philosophy majors and they come from varied backgrounds. And it is really interesting to me to see how little they know about themselves in terms of their structure and how appreciative they are when they get this bit of information about standing in a plumb line of balance or being able to sort of see actually either on a on um, a chart or a grid of themselves where their body might be an imbalance when they had no idea. I mean, some of it does relate to Alexander in that, you know, if you always stand on your right leg, that creates a certain kind of imbalance. Yes. Mm -hmm. And right. we just are looking at this um, a little more through the anatomical and kinesiological view um, in in um, a lot of layman's terms. So there is some, I think people really want to know about certain muscles and what they do without getting too bogged down in um, detail. Yeah, I, in, in my own experience, I, I have to say that when before I trained to be an Alexander t teacher, I, I had gone through high school and university and um, been out and about in the world for some years, and I discovered that I knew almost nothing about what was inside me. Yeah. I had no idea, for example, where my ribs were. I knew there was something called ribs, but it was pretty amazing when I actually saw the first diagram of that and then located them on myself. And, yeah. I, you know, and, and, and the spinal column, I thought it was just like a continuous column. <laughs> a lot of people think of it like a stainless steel rod. Yeah. Not yeah. Very movable, exactly. you know, a flexible structure. Yeah. Exactly. And, and I think the, the, someone listening might say, well, it doesn't really matter because as long as you're if you're moving, you must be using it okay. But but the thing is that if you think your spine is a, a rod or a solid rod or a straight rod, that's going to affect how you how you move. It certainly does. Yeah. And um, yeah, another example of that too is you know so many people really have no idea where their lungs are in their body, mm -hmm. um, and. And so their perception of where that is actually um, informs the manner in which they breathe. So their breathing mechanism may not be as efficient as it could be. Um, and just knowing where something is and its function, so that's not just where it is, but how it moves, people will change with just understanding the knowledge and change in a way where they're moving more efficiently, breathing more efficiently. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, in, in my own experience of teaching, um, it, it, to just to kind of echo what you just said, when people learn, for example, where their head, um, what the connection between their head and their spine is, and where yeah. it is and how it functions, yeah. for most people, that's way different than they imagined if they were imagining it all before. And just that piece of information um, learned in an experiential well, way. So they're not just looking at, at diagrams, but actually locating on themselves that joint. That makes a huge difference in how they function, 
even and they in, can feel that difference in their own tension level almost and, instantly almost yes, anybody yes yes, yes. That's true and I had a student come up to me just today uh, giving a final uh, we call them a final practicum they're allowed to choose any activity that they want um, and they're kind of practicing the functional and awareness practices and um, the student at the end just said, you know, this class was mind blowing for me. And she said, from the first day when I realized how far forward in space my head was and how much tension it took to hold it there. And um, so, yeah, I do think, you know, certainly that links up to the Alexander technique in a really nice way um, because we do look at that head, neck, spine balance. Right. I mean, I think that's one area that most Alexander teachers uh, or most Alexander students certainly would get some information about uh, just in general with Alexander lessons. But I am assuming that you're going quite a bit further, for example, how your shoulders attach to your torso, how your hip joints work, that sort of thing. Right? Yes, and we, you know, kind of look at that. You have, you know, your ankle joint and feet. You have 26 bones and you have um, actually uh, 20 muscles and 31 um, ligaments in your foot. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that actually means there's a lots of play and leeway for the body to navigate itself in terms of where we stand on the earth. Mm -hmm. um, and that is also something that seems to really connect well to the whole body and how it balances. Right. So we look at the structure of the foot and ankle in relationship to hip and knee. And, um, Functional awareness does have a whole body approach, but we're often looking specifically at a certain structure during one session and how that then comes back to relate to the whole. Right. And I know you, you mentioned that among the groups of people you teach uh, outside of the university or would be working with, with functional awareness might be athletes or musicians uh, or all sorts of groups of people. Could you give an example of just a specific piece of information that might help uh, someone in a particular field that would that other people listening could could kind of identify with? Um, there is an activity that we do um, for dancers in particular, and they um, look at how the structure of the pelvis rests in line with the spine and the legs. And some people sway their pelvis forward and some people sway their pelvis back. Um, and so we look at these very tilts and there's an activity we do where they actually just put one hand on the front of your, if you put your own hand on your hip bone in the front, what you think is that, and then another one on the back and they just sort of bend their knees and straighten their knees and see if there's movement happening in there. And um, for dancers in particular, if you can just stabilize that, so it just feels a little more like an elevator going straight down and straight up, which we call pelvic neutral, then it's amazing how much more accuracy they have for balance and for turning. And I also was just working with somebody today on forehand swing in tennis. And that sort of neutral pelvis as you weight shift forward for your swing in tennis is that same thing that you'd want to know about. So, and in our everyday lives, if we have a habit for a sway of one form or another, it kind of compromises our system. But if we have a little awareness about how it can function when we're, you know, moving around, then it can ease up a lot of potential discomfort in the low back. Yeah. And in my own uh, teaching experience, uh, when students learn how their shoulder girdle attaches to their torso yeah. and where, where, the, where the actual bone on bone connection takes place, that Pretty is surprised. <laughs> which is an um, which almost always is totally new and surprising even shocking information but which is 
instantly uh, testable and instantly usable, it makes a huge difference in how they use their arms for, say, reaching or if they're a tennis player. You just mentioned tennis, uh, someone who uses their arms in a sports activity, baseball batters, anything Chalice. like that, cellists, yeah. yeah. string players of all kinds. Um, that that Just that piece of information, which is um, really hardly anybody knows it who hasn't learned it either from Alexander Technique or, or something like you're, you're doing, just makes a, a huge difference in how they function. And yeah. it's pretty simple stuff. It's not a lot of people. I know I was very intimidated by the whole concept of studying anatomy at all when I went on my Alexander training course. But really, the level of anatomy we're talking about here is actually pretty simple. It's quite simple, and a lot of times just um, someone understands a visual picture, not just of the skeletal structure, but also if I look at the big sweep of muscle that goes across our back called the latissimus dorsi, and a lot of people know them as your lats, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at that they start way down at your tailbone, and they're like a huge Chinese fan that comes way up across the broad back and actually attaches on the front of your arm. That mm -hmm. is something that when somebody kind of has a uh, both a visual picture of the muscle or then um, an imagery based uh, navigation of that muscle once they understand it, which functional awareness does use both imagery and anatomical imagery. It also gives this great sense of support, like you feel like you're parasailing, that feeling when you bring your arms out and mm -hmm. you can feel the wind blowing towards you and your back sort of supporting you with that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's quite a wonderful thing. So, yeah, really simple understanding of your body's um, functional structure is fun. I'm, most people find it really fun. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's an enjoyable day. You know? It is. An, it is. It is enjoyable. Play. Yeah. 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 That, I, I don't know whether you work with children at all with this, but mm. to my, my take on it is this is something uh, that could and should be taught in kindergarten. It's, it's that simple. A kindergarten kid could pick this up right away, probably a lot faster than most of us. I, I have a little, um, I have a little uh, turkey in the straw song that I sing to kindergartners. I go into f kindergarten first grade when they start taking their spelling tests every Friday and mm -hmm. um, bring my little skeleton and talk to them a little bit about how it balances and um, and and how they can organize themselves. Mm -hmm. And should I sing the song for you? You know why not? This will be a <laughs> podcast first. <laughs> so, oh, you sit on your ischial bones and lengthen through your spine. Nod your head at the atlas and you're doing fine. Let your shoulders release out and allow a breath in. Slowly breathe out and now begin. So that's the song they kind of would say or sing before spelling tests after I left. And the teacher just said, you know, they found their body use. They were able to kind of have an easy sense of themselves. The teacher had a moment to breathe. And so I went back to work with students in the same school when they were in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And um, because they were just getting laptops, they were mm -hmm. all using laptops. And so they asked me to just come in and talk to them a little bit. Um, and <laughs> one of them came running up to me and said, Mrs. Ramita, I still remember the song. And she starts singing, oh, you mm -hmm. sit on your... So um, I do think it's that's a really great example of how really simple understandings of function can happen in first grade. They can happen in seventh grade. They can happen simply. And they're memorable enough, that experience of ease, that we mm -hmm. want to repeat it and set up much easier habits in our lives to help buoy. As I say, we only get one skeleton to last a lifetime and our life expectancy since 1900 has almost doubled. So if you're gonna live that long, you know, they can replace a hip or a knee here, but basically we have one skeleton. It's nice to take good care of it and know a little bit about it. Well, and, and just in general, uh, it, 
um, our, our body is, among many other things, a kind of machine. And you wouldn't want to be operating a machine without having any idea of how the parts function. <laughs> That's a great. And, and that great is analogy. what most yeah. most uh, of uh, most people are are doing, unfortunately. Um, Nancy, is there anything that we haven't uh, covered that you want to mention before we come to an end? Um, the only thing I'd like to mention is that um, these functional awareness, anatomy in action, is um, can be experienced, you know, in a one-time day, or it can be experienced in a sequence of workshops, and that. Um, uh, you can also head to my website, which is Functional Awareness and at www.functionalawarenessanatomyinaction.org mm -hmm. to find out a little bit more if it's of interest to you. Sure. We'll put a link to that site and to your, um, your Alexander site on the, by the sounds, interview. Sounds great. And um, my, just to reiterate, my, my guest today uh, has been a Nancy Romita, uh, an Alexander Technique teacher and a developer of um, functional awareness, anatomy in action. Um, and um, she she lives and teaches in, in Baltimore, but I imagine that you're available for workshops elsewhere, right? Do you travel, yes. yes. We're heading to Basel, Switzerland for the International Association of Dance, Medicine, and Science um, in October to share some of this. So um, certainly we can go, you know, a little closer or a little further. Okay. Well, um, so uh, I will also put a link by the interview to a website that has more general information about the Alexander Technique. Um, Nancy, uh, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks for letting me share my information with you. Love the song. <laughs> <laughs>